Suns beating the Timberwolves at home, 97-87. Good evening. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I'm Yeti Gibson. We are thrilled. Yes, because only a few left to yes. go, right? So this is the way uh, they need to do things. Exactly. A huge win tonight in against the top team in the Western Conference. We're waiting, as always, to hear from some of the players. You never know who's going to come out. The players, <laughs> usually the coach comes out. Yes. So as soon as they come out, we're going to take those live at the podium. But for now, let's begin with Mark McClune inside the Footprint Center. Hey, Mark. You're the charm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I do know defense travels, and it's even better when you have it at home. And the Phoenix Suns, we've been looking for clues all season. Are they a title contender? Well, perhaps the best evidence that we've seen yet is tonight's performance against the best team in the West. The Minnesota Timberwolves held to 87 points, the best the Suns had played on defense so far this year up to this game was holding a team to 88. So this is their best defensive performance of the season and it comes at a great time. The sun's getting hot at a great time. We talked last game about how Devin Booker had really gotten aggressive offensively and Bradley Beal had kind of taken a back seat and was running more of the point guard role. Tonight, Booker changing things up. 13 points, 13 assists, wasn't as aggressive offensively, had some timely buckets, but got all of his teammates going. And this is a Sun team that certainly looks connected uh, against a team that's going to be a force in the NBA playoffs. So the Suns riding high, a third straight, what I would say blowout win. You have the Pelicans coming in here on Sunday, a chance to put your distance between uh, the, themselves and the team that they are fighting to stave off in the NBA play and to stay out of it. Then the Clippers here on Tuesday to close out the home schedule. Are the Suns peaking at the right time? It certainly seems like it, guys. I just think that we, uh, we closed up the paint and was able to get out the shooters as well. Uh, 10 for 29 from the three, but I think a lot of them were over a contest. Um, but we were just there for each other, helping guys and pick and roll, being a low man, helping on drives, and that was just a, tough to stop. And so we had to meet him with bodies, and I think we did a solid job of doing that. I mean, you can't force him to do nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? You just got to, you know, uh, win the numbers game. Just have more more players on him. You know, two or three guys in this area. Uh, we're not selling out to stop him, but, you know, you got you show presentation like, like there is more help than it is. And hopefully that deters him a bit. But he's just, he's he's tough. He, move, he moves so smooth and effortlessly that a lot of times he can beat double and triple teams. So... Uh, but I think we did a solid job of just forcing tough shots, uh, not putting them on the free throw line, and uh, getting on the running as well. Yeah, I, wanted, I didn't want to foul first off because I had I had a bad start with the fouls in the first quarter. I had two, and then I had three in the second quarter. So I didn't want to be too physical with him, and he loves contact. Um, so I just try to use my length as much as possible. Uh, I like that we were patient. I mean, we still turned the ball over 18 times. We still had 29 assists. I think that we had good intentions a lot. They're a tough team, long athletic team who can guard, you know, a lot of those guys on that team can guard multiple positions, so it's tough on you. But we stayed poised, you know. I think they cut it down to maybe 13, 14. They were hitting shots there, and we stayed the course. I think the last two games showed that we could stay poised when teams started to cut the lead on us, and tonight was one of those nights. Uh, just playing together on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we're not waiting <clears throat> um, to get into the game. Uh, you know, middle of the first quarter, start of the second quarter. I think we're we're taking a fight to these teams from the tip off, and uh, that's putting us in good positions to finish games. You think that you're peaking at the right time? I don't even look at it that way. But I mean, who, who, we just want to keep putting in good days, man. Not think too deep about it. Just come to work tomorrow. What have you kind of seen from Nurk in the short roll? No. Some of those possessions here in the corner, and it's really hard for that little man to kind of decide what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, initially it's the, the guy who draws two on the ball, and then we trust Nurk to make all those passes. And uh, he's been phenomenal at kicking out to threes, especially in that short roll. <clears throat> so 
he finds me in that corner a lot. And um, it's rare that I get corner threes, wide open corner threes. And I've been seeing a lot of them this year because he's such a good passer. And then also because Book and Bragg can put two on the ball. Um, so uh, that puts the team in a bind. You know, a lot of guys don't want to just leave me wide open over here in the corner, but you don't want to give up a layup either. So it's a good problem to have for us when we got multiple guys open. Yep, Kevin Durant saying the Suns took it right to the T-Wolves from the opening tip-off, a 15-0 run to start the game. That was the difference tonight. So where do the Suns set currently in the NBA's Western Conference standings with now five games to play? We're going to talk more about it when we come back here on Arizona's Family. All right, Mark, thank you. Still to come on Arizona's Family. Grant just said he doesn't go along with this line of thinking, but to the rest of us, it looks like the Suns, as they near the end of the regular season, are getting hot yes. at just the right time. Perfect timing, <laughs> hosting one of the top in the Western Conference tonight. The Suns didn't look bothered at all. <laughs> The never bothered Mark McClune. He's never bothered. Look at his face now. He's on the floor of the Footprint Center. Uh, you watched this all happen. How exciting. How exciting. You know, I was thinking more about what you said, yet I think I am the good luck charm it just took to this point in the season to actually feel this way as the Suns really starting to find something it feels like here as we hit the home stretch and maybe give the Valley and fans some confidence while the Suns are fighting for a sixth place in the conference and to stay out of the, the play-in tournament. The Timberwolves came in here as the top team in the NBA's Western Conference, but if you didn't know that, Coming into tonight, you might have guessed that their roles were reversed in the standings. We'll get to the standings in a minute, but the Suns came out on a heater, jumping out to a 15-0 lead in the first couple minutes, the first four minutes and 25 seconds to be exact. The T-Wolves entered tonight as the best defensive team in the league, but it was the Suns' defense showing up, holding Minnesota to just 41 first-half points and a season-low 87 points in the night. Yusef Nurkic doing Workage on the glass, pulling down 15 rebounds. Good job on Matt Hippie there, our producer, with that one. The only thing slowing him down was foul trouble, forcing him to sit out for much of the third quarter. On the other end, Grayson Allen with another solid scoring night. Team high 23 points. The big three holding steady as well. Kevin Durant finishing with 22 points. Bradley Beal 14 on 67% shooting. And Devin Booker a double-double. 13 and 13. No big 50 or 40 performance uh, point performance tonight for Book. But he got the job done with a 13 assist. Here's the Western Conference as it stands after this one. Phoenix getting some help with the Kings and Pelicans both losing. Take a look, the Suns maintain the sixth spot, and let's head inside the interview room where Frank Vogel has just sat down to discuss this one. Better because there was areas that we, were, we, we could still be better. Um, we don't want to be a good defense, we'll be a great defense. And uh, our guys responded. A lot, of, a lot of the stuff we worked on uh, carried over into tonight's game. I think Nurk is, is really, really grown throughout the course of the season as a rim protector and just just blocking everything that comes to the basket understanding the the drop coverage uh that we want him to be in and um is really trusting his teammates you know to go attack and block shots that his teammates will cover his back so that piece is growing and uh you know the most impressive thing for me was that you know even though we had uh when we have 18 turnovers they only had nine fast break points like we're recovering those possessions way better than we did uh, even two weeks ago. You know, we just made a commitment. We say hey, every day we're going to watch our transition defense and figure out how we can be better with our effort, focus, alertness, <clears throat> matching up, uh, all those ways to save those possessions. And you know, this was a, a response to that work.
precious love that starts their loud Love longing for our union then Love my fragrance so captive sing You close to me I lose myself Never thought I would find love like this Never thought I would be waiting Move your body, let your spirit soar And let your atom move your body